Hey guys, and welcome to the show. And today we have Jody Lockridge back, and he's going to talk to us about log analytics in Azure, and that's pretty good. It's almost the best thing on the earth. But you know what is not better than? My nutter butters. Hey Jody, how you doing, bud? Pretty good, Lex. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Where are you today? I'm actually uh, in Charlotte today. Oh, wow. That's a rarity. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm at Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, but I will be in Charlotte shortly because I'm as soon as I get done with this, I'm flying back. Oh, that should be fun. Yeah. Seeing any cool, yeah, yeah. Seeing any cool stuff out there? Man, I love coming out here. I see I see cool stuff all the time. Um, they're working on the SLS, which is the uh, replacement for the space shuttle. So it's it's pretty neat to be a part of that. Okay, cool. Yeah, that, I wish I could see that. Yeah. So, hey, let me ask you a question. Today we're going to talk about log analytics in Azure, correct? Yeah, uh, we're going to go a uh, quick overview, talk about some of the things you can do with it, and how you can do more than just look at logs with it. So Okay. Yeah, that sounds pretty neat. So I, I'll admit I haven't looked into this at all, so I don't know a lot about it. So I'm really counting on you to tell me and the people that are watching and listening to this all about it. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, to kind of talk about it a little bit to get started, if you've ever worked with managed services, you know how you have like uh, operations manager or orchestrator where certain events happen, you, they can fire off alerts, whether it be emails, SMS, or even kickoff run books, we now have that functionality built into Azure, and you can actually customize it extensively. Everything so, from... So, so yeah, you ahead. mean like, sorry, so you mean like event log stuff? Yeah, event logs, uh, performance monitor data, um, and you can actually get that not just from Windows servers, but from Linux servers as well now. Oh, wow, that's cool. That's pretty interesting. Oh, yeah. This slide shows a good example of what Log Analytics is capable of doing. We can use multiple data sources, whether it comes from the Azure Monitor feature, various virtual machines you have set up, Operations Manager. All these other components feed into Log Analytics. Then Log Analytics itself can feed back out to export data into Power BI, logical applications, kick off PowerShell scripts or runbooks, which we'll take a look at a little bit later, and even customize your log search APIs for custom applications to extend that functionality. What I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to share out my screen so you can actually see what it looks like in the portal. Okay. Where I've already I've already created the OMS workspace or the log analytics workspace as it shows up under the resources list. And you can actually take a look here. I've already added a couple of vir virtual machines that I have set up. I still have one that's not connected, but that one's still setting up actually. <coughs> but once these are set up, I can actually go in and configure quite a few options. I can create custom alerts, which is right here. I can create a new alert rule. I've already saved a query for this particular part of the demo. Okay. So actually, I just need to add my criteria, which is actually going to be, I'm just going to use this event ID 7023 services started. So are you creating a like a, a filter there? Or I see it says search query. Yeah, it's actually a search query. It runs every couple minutes. You actually set that down here. Every five minutes is how often it runs. And then, and then it'll, I, all, it'll only pick up those those events, seventy twenty threes. Yeah, this particular this particular query, yes. Okay. And I'll just give it a greater than three. So if it detects more than three services have started up, I can actually go in. I can give it a few names. Okay. Just keep these very short for demo purposes. What what is the seventy twenty three map to? Uh, a service has started successfully. Oh, okay, I get it. So we're just gonna we're just gonna randomly start some services and create the criteria that meets this search. Correct. Yeah. So that's the majority of how how this all works as far as the customization goes. Like I said, I'll provide a few links here and here at the end of this. Yeah, in fact, one of the things I did want to show you here is. In the Azure portal, yeah, you can actually go into the advanced settings, and you'll actually see your different data types, like Windows servers, Linux servers, and yeah. then you can actually select data 
you actually have Linux performance counters. I can configure all these right. and apply those. It starts collecting that data so you can actually see them in the log analytics dashboard. You'll see a graph like disk usage if it goes up certain times a day or CPU goes up at a certain time of day. You can start addressing that or looking for causes remotely. Okay, so I have a question about that. Yes. So, so are those performance counters that are running within the Linux OS or are those performance counters that are running in Azure that as it monitors the Linux VM? Do you understand what I mean? Oh yeah, this is actually an extension of the OMS agent that starts these performance monitors. So where does the OMS agent run? It actually runs on the client side of OS. You, you can run in the VM or on your local machines on premise that are talking back to Azure. Okay, so we actually have an OMS agent that we have created that you run and install in Linux. So it's a daemon, I guess, right? Yes. So you can see here connected sources, Linux servers, download agent for Linux, and this gives you everything you need to configure it to connect. Well, that's really cool. I like that. Oh, yeah. So it has a, a lot of power. You can actually use those, build your own custom queries. It, this will also pull the syslog from Linux, which is kind of like the event logs in Windows as well. Okay, yeah, that's cool. Yep. All right, so I see a couple of other options, like under Linux Server, we have Azure Storage. What can we monitor in Azure Storage? We can actually monitor, monitor storage accounts, um, like blob storage, that are tied to an account to see see if they're being seeing how much data is being sent back and forth, being written, read. If there's any bottlenecks there, or if we may need to extend it. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty cool. And then under System Center, what do we have there? I mean, I, is, I know you don't have anything defined. I'm just curious as to what we can. Yeah, this allows you to pull in your management groups and actually get that log data from here as well. So okay. it, you, you can actually have the two combined where they operate as one. Okay. And when, once you grab all of this information, we know that you can build search criteria and define triggers and actions that occur. Is there a, like a dashboard or something like that that we can just, you know, glance at? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. In fact... At, top of, at the top of most of these screens, there's this analytics button, which opens, opens this little dashboard. And you can click on any of these, like data volumes, see how my data is being used, which yeah. this query takes a second. And then you'll actually see a little bit of data spiking. So I have a nice little graph. All right. That's cool. I see here a little bit after 12, data usage jumped up. Then it dropped back off a little bit, a little bit after 6 p.m. Uh, UTC. Okay. And then I can actually customize these as far as I want. I can actually say, let's say I want this to go back two days or only 30 minutes. Or I don't just want this. I actually want to see the number of bytes being transferred. That's all here whenever we actually look at the, the uh, solution queries. Yeah. And I can actually go in here, pick these out. I can actually use the general exploration queries. Yeah, which are, which are basic, but you can use these as a framework to start. And one of the other links I'm going to provide is understanding some of the query language. So if you want to start building custom queries, it's a great document to refer to. Yeah, that's really cool. I was going to ask you about that. So it looks like the query, the general exploration stuff that you have highlighted uh, in the right-hand pane, those are just all predefined queries, correct? So, Correct. Yeah, so we just went in, you know, some developer went in and wrote these queries. So I imagine you could click on any of these queries, look at the code that, that they wrote to perform these queries, and kind of get a good idea of how this is actually mapped out. Uh, yes, exactly. That's why these are here. These are supposed to be a framework for helping you start getting used to building custom queries for your specific environments. Yeah. In, this, in this case, this environment was built literally within the last 24 hours. So this query here where I set it to 168 hours since yeah. the last time computer connected, obviously it's not going to find anything. Right. But, yeah. you, but you can customize this. You have quite a few for uh, IIS. I don't I actually don't have IIS set up. Okay. But, so I get the syntax error because there's nothing, nothing in, the, in the database. Right. Yeah, well, that makes sense. But the, the, I'm just looking at the query language itself, and that looks actually kind of powerful. It looks like you could do some pretty cool stuff. Oh, it, it's extremely powerful. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this link here, and I'll pull it over to the screen. 
because this is actually replacing some of the older log log API features we had. Yeah. And this actually gives you a cheat sheet where you can actually see how some of this actually works going from the old old model to the new one. Where now I can do search error, I can just do search, just type in event, search for an event. I can list events only for specific computers. This is a great place to get started. And there's okay. actually and you see here there's a link for a tutorial on writing queries, there's a full query language reference. So you yeah. it's so, you can do so, quite a bit with it. So just just for the people that are watching this at the end of the show, let's throw some links up uh, for some of this stuff. Oh yeah. Um, and do you remember the alert that I set up where it was supposed to call my cell my cell phone? Yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and trigger that and we'll log into a VM here and try to restart one of these services. Okay. See if that works. And there it goes. I now have a phone call. Yeah, that's cool. Hold your phone up. Let's see. Yep. Can you see it? Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> All right. Wow, that's that's pretty neat, man. I like that. Oh yeah. And even get All the right. alert alert on my desktop. Yeah, oh look at that. <laughs> unknown unknown call. <laughs> that is pretty cool. I like that. All right. Well, anything else cool for us today? Um, that's really the meat and potatoes of this, but I did want to share out those resources for you. You should see those on your screen now. Yep, absolutely. And there's a two for the overview, the query language help, and connecting on-premise systems to log analytics. That also has links on how to set it up for your VMs, okay. as, as well as links to setting up the alert systems. Oh, that's awesome, dude. Listen, thank you again, and uh, that's your taste of Premiere.